Ace Money the name, getting paid by the game. My goal is to help you get that money by sharing my picks as well as some useful knowledge and betting techniques. Now, while we go over this recap, I'd like to get right into these picks so we can get in and out like a B&E with handicappers. So it's the SBR, Sportsbook Robbery. What's going on? I'm Ace Money, and this is Sportsbook Robbery. So, 14th November, NBA. We got uh, one game, one game on the slate. Uh, we got Mavs playing the Jazz. A little look at the starting projected starting lineups. Nine o'clock game. They won't be uh, finalized till later. So NBA does it usually like ninety minutes before the game. Um, all right, we got Mavs five and six going against the Jazz two and eight. Spread minus nine for the Mavs right now. Line opened at uh, eight, I believe. Total 231. That stayed the same. Uh, started checking this out, too. I found this on ESPN. It's basically a pace meter. Utah is second in pace today. Uh, 103 possessions. Dallas, ninth in pace. 101 possessions. Offensive assists. Dallas is 14th with 19 assists a game. Utah is 25th with 17 assists a game. Rebounds. Utah is 23rd. Uh, I didn't write the number. 50. 50 piece. And uh, Dallas is 27th, 48. Offense efficiency, Dallas is 7th. And uh, Utah, dead last, 30th. Seventh. Dallas right here. Bam. Dead last, Utah, 30th. And... Uh, Defense, Dallas is 14th defense efficiency. Pick that defense up a little bit, halfway. Half, halfway through the pack, Utah, 28th. So they bottom in offense and defensive efficiency. Uh, field goal percentage, Dallas is 14th, and uh, Utah is 27th. It's only one game, so I get a little more in depth with you guys. Uh, I'll do some trends. Jazz two and three in the last five. There are, uh, oops, sorry. Two and three in the last five games. Two and three in the last five against the spread. Three and two road games against the spread. Totals have gone over in three of the last five. And uh, Jazz are all playing at home, so this totals have gone over in two of the Jazz's last five games at home. Mavs, one and four in the last five. Uh, it's been struggling. Uh, one and three in the last five against the spread. One and two in their road games against the spread. And the totals have gone over in three of the last five. Uh, P.J. Washington might not play. He was out yet on Tuesday. County George, probable. What else we got? What else we got? Money. Most of the money is all the money is it's on the, uh, the Mavs. The bets are on the Mavs. It's to the right over here. Uh, the spread is on the Mavs. Bets and money. Uh, right now, more of the money is on the, on the under. Uh, I think the Mavs should bounce back. Uh, it is not a cup day. Uh, and also, the cup day is tomorrow. Again, it starts with uh, Mavs and Utah not playing. I took that into consideration, thinking if they were playing, they would maybe rest some guys and whatnot, 
but uh, it's a regular day. Then they both have off tomorrow. And then Friday, they're playing for their cup. Uh, I do have some player props. Let's get into them. All right, first up, uh, Derek Lively, points over eight and a half. Uh, they had it on FanDuel before. Now it's on BetMGM. I think the line's at nine and a half. I'll line get back like always. Uh, if you ever notice, books are always spot on. We either win by a little, lose by a little. So if you all line it back, uh, gives you an advantage. Um, we already know, as I said before, Utah's bottom of the pack in defense. Luca might not play. Washington's game time decision as well. Uh, Kessler for the, for the Jazz. Um, the cup started when they played the Warriors the other day. There's no, there's not a cup game today. Tomorrow, cup games re uh, start. Jazz and Dallas don't play. They play their next cup game would be on Tuesday, so I'm taking that into consideration because teams are going to try harder. Uh, they're going to play better, you know. Um, playoff atmosphere. They want to win this in-season tournament. So I like the fact that they started doing that. Uh, yeah, so eight and a half points. He's cleared this for, uh, what, seven? 57% hit rate. Head to head. They've played once this year. He had 14 points. He's easily capable of going over this. Couple lobs, inside rebounds, old boards, putbacks. Um... Games he hasn't went over this. He's only played like 15 minutes. So if he plays his normal 20 minutes, uh, which he averaging 24 minutes, he should go over this. I'm not really worried for the year. His field goal percentage is up there. His, shot, his shots are down in those games that he didn't, didn't go over it. So that could be an issue if you don't shoot the ball, right? Even playing points. But... Uh, I think he's going to go over it. Uh, like I said, overall, ranked 26th, the Jazz in points allowed. Center position ranked 20th, giving up 20 points. And Lively don't start. He comes off the bench. But uh, I think he should be able to go over this. So let's get a D-Live, points 8.5. Next up. Uh, Daniel Gafford, points over nine and a half. It's a little juice, minus 150. Uh, uh, on FanDuel, big deck, big uh, discrepancies, 275 on Caesars. His line's probably 10 and a half, right? Yeah, 10 and a half. Which he's been going over it as well. Uh, 118, FanDuel's the best. He's been going over that as well. You just I'll leave it on there, but I played it at nine and a half. Uh, once again, overall, ranked 26th. He's a power forward. They're ranked 13th, giving up 22 points. So that's four games. He's uh, been shooting more for the year. He's 86%. Uh, he's not shooting threes. He's hitting a couple foul shots, free throws. His minutes have gone up a little bit. You know, they'll play both of them. Uh, Gafford will start, Lively will come in. Sometimes Lively will bring a little more energy or if Gafford gets in foul trouble. Uh, he's exceeded 10 and a half, five of his last six, seven and 14. I think he should be able to go over it. I, I really think they're gonna try to, you know, get get their team gelling. Uh, uh, especially if Luca's not playing. I mean, even with Luca playing, but without Luca playing, they're gonna need other people to step up. Washington's probably not gonna play, uh, so you know they're gonna need a couple extra people to step up and score. Uh, Ten and a half, I think, is too low. Head to head, he didn't clear it this year. He played twenty minutes. Uh, what do you shoot? Fifty percent, four of eight. One one must have been uh, end one. 
But yeah, once again, same thing with uh, Lively. If he gets his minutes, normal minutes, he should easily go over this. Uh, we need five baskets uh, and a foul shot. Let's get it, Danny Gafford. All right, so uh, Clay Thompson rebounds over three and a half. Uh, not really known for his rebounds, but he gets a handful. Not even a little less than a handful. I guess a handful would be five, right? I don't know. Plus 130. Uh, other books got a minus 105, minus 121. Big discrepancies. So, uh, Utah, 19th overall. Rebounds allowed. 29th of the shooting guard. Uh, they got a bad, bad field goal percentage. So uh, that that kind of helps, you know. He has cleared this in the last four games. Five out of the last six. And seven out of 11 for the year. Uh, last couple games, he's played over 30. I kind of don't expect that to happen. Last time they played, he played 27. And he did go over this. He had four. Head-to-head. -head. This is going back to last year. He was on the Warriors, obviously. Cleared it three out of four. And then the one time this year. Plus money plays. I always bet less. Unless it's like 105 or something like that. But it's just harder to hit. You know, this the, the odds for a play to hit, like a plus 130. I don't have it written down here. But, uh... That number is an actual percentage that means the play is going to hit. So, uh, like a minus 120 is 54%. If you look in the info on my profile or whatever, there's a link there. It says odds versus percentages. It'll tell you. But, um, so plus 130 would be uh, really low odds to hit. And he's hit at 64%, so it's a big edge. Actually, I could show you real quick uh, resources it's definitely a way to find out when you use you can figure out plays that are really even know much you use probability and uh, percentage uh, what was it plus 130, 43% chance to hit. Now, he's gone over to 64%, so 43, 53, 63. It's a 21% edge right there. So, yeah, I'm rocking with it. Let's get it, Clay Thompson, all day, every day. Bounce over three and a half. Plus 125. Uh, FanDuel minus 108. DraftKings uh, minus 110. So definitely, you know, shop around. Uh, overall, ranked 27th. Rebounds allowed. Dallas shooting guard position, ranked 23rd. It's cleared this 5 out of 8. Uh, when they did play this year, he had five as well. Head-to-head. Uh, -head. This goes back to last year, but he's cleared it every time they've played. You know, you don't get over it by much, but he's been getting over it. Uh, old team shooting the ball pretty bad, so it'll be rebound opportunities, as well as... Uh, you know, Luca throwing up all them threes, long a lot of threes from both sides uh, means long rebounds. Shooting guards can get to them. Uh, check the odds. Do that again. Plus one twenty five. Forty four percent chance. For the year, he's at 63, so that's 44, 54. 
It's a 19% edge right there. I know I picked Clay Thompson for rebounds. They're both shooting guards, but uh, so they be battling each other, I guess, technically, right? But you should go over this. Jordan Clarkson, rebounds. Let's get it. All right, if you could like the video, new viewers, hit that subscribe button. Let's turn on the notifications so you get all my plays, my live bets, anything I do. I try to keep you in the loop, keep you informed. Uh, I started this channel a couple months ago, new to YouTube. Uh, just trying to get the subs up there. Uh, I am a sports better, first and foremost. Uh, been in a couple of years. So... Uh, you know, I do bet all these plays, so I like to just keep you in the loop if uh, anything changes. Or sometimes my videos come out late too because I'm waiting on certain info and lines and and this and that. So uh, my videos don't get much much time out there. Like yesterday, they got out real late. Last two days, yesterday I had nine plays. I think I went eight and one. Day before, seven plays, went five and two. Uh, had like a rough week before that, but that happens in sports betting. But yeah, also, if you could leave a comment, links and comments, I'll get the videos out there. As well as I don't get paid for this, so it just gives me some interaction. Um, yeah, so we're going in Lori Marketing, points, rebounds, assists, uh, under, went under 30 and a half. Played a couple unders yesterday, uh, trying to figure it out. You know, they put lines so high, and, and then I'm like, oh, I, don't, I won't play this. I don't play that. You know, so I usually play overs. So I'm starting to try to figure it out to play these unders. Uh, for the year, he's only went over this number once. Came close a few times. One of them was versus Dallas. He had uh, 17-9-2, and two, but he was still on the end with 28. Uh, I'm just figuring he didn't have tons of rebound chances. Uh, I'm just figuring he's going to have to have a hell of a game to go over, right, if he's gone under all these games. Uh, Dallas rebounds and assists, they are pretty bad. They're allowing a lot of them. Forward position, it does get a little better for the under. But... Uh, I'm just giving it a shot. Marketing on the uh, head to head. This is last year. He went over, had a crazy game, 34 points. Obviously, he went over, but three other times, one of them this year, he went under. Uh, yeah, so let's get it. Lori Marketing, go under. All right, so last up, I went with uh, Collins, John Collins, under, again, we went with the unders, uh, 29 and a half. Uh, he did go over this last game, crazy game. He's been over this twice this year. Uh, you know, so that's 80% uh, towards the under, 8 out of 10. Minutes have been ticking up a little bit here. Uh, he's coming off the bench, I'm pretty sure. Potential assists. You know, and the rule of thumb is you kind of want to cut these in half. Rebounds have been way up there. The potential in his last couple games. But uh, his minutes is also ticked up. Definitely capable of getting in foul trouble, so hopefully that happens. Uh... Shot the ball a lot more too last game. And hit a bunch of threes. So as long as he don't hit his bunch of threes, you know, have a great game, he should go under this. Uh, head to head, he went under it this year. Back to last year, he cleared it once. 21-11. You know, great game. Of course, he went over. So as long as he doesn't have one of them great games, we should be all right. Uh, Dallas, like I said before, rebounds and assists, they allow a lot. It's power forward, 
It's like marketing to our 19, 22, and 15. So, you know, as long as he don't have a great game, he should go under. Uh, that marketing play opened at 31, so it might go back up to 31. So if you can get it, you know, try to get it, at, obviously, at the highest number to go under. Uh, sometimes you can alt line them up as well. You know, he's got to alt line them down. But, uh, yeah, so be careful out there. One game, tough, uh, you know, it's tough. The sports books are usually spot on. You just got to look for the weak spots, commit that sports book robbery. Ace money to name game, paper to game. Let's go. Thank <laughs> you.